everybody. This is Pam with Paper Outpost, and today we are making a uh, journal cover from one of these mailers that you might get in the mail. Sometimes we get them from Amazon or other uh, senders, but here is a great, uh, I believe this is a nine, oh, it's a little bigger than nine, nine and a quarter by 12. So basically nine by 12. And um, um, actually I could probably make it exactly nine by 12. And let me do that because that's just a really dandy cover size and I can easily change this one which works out perfectly because there's a little tear here anyway so I lost about a quarter of an inch so let's just take off that quarter of an inch and, and be done with it. How fun is that? Making something easy and simple out of stuff we already have around the house which is uh, one very fun thing to do if you're a junk journal maker. You can take the ordinary, the um, uh, discardable objects, and turn them into something fun and useful, and uh, maybe a beautiful book, maybe an heirloom book, maybe a gorgeous journal, maybe um, something for a wedding, or a travel journal, or a dream journal, or a recipe journal, something like that. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, let me just make it a little smaller so you can see what on earth is going on. Okay, so now this is open. So I think I, what I want to do is close it. So I think I'm just going to maybe I'm going to close it with some Fabrifix. First of all, just any glue will work here just to seal it up. And what I'm going to do on this side, actually maybe this side, is I'm going to collage um, some fabric pieces and I'm just going to give you a little idea of my fabric box. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Don't forget March, this right now, March 2024, a March Madness special is going on. 50% off all DigiKits. They're my printable, downloadable files. It doesn't include my um, print and mail option, but uh, this does include all of the computer files that you can purchase on my Etsy site. Um, and here is the Etsy site link. And also, you can find it in the drop-down description box below the video. But if you can't get that, here it is. And here's a link to all my links if you're looking for all the social media, Amazon shop, t-shirt shop, merchandise shop, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, here you go. And also to the newsletter link if you're looking for that. Um, okay, so there you go. That goes through March. It's a rare special that I do every once in a blue moon. And it's going on right now. So there you go. Um, I put a little bit of glue in there. So the idea was, I was trying to show you, um, which I'm not very good at doing this. Okay, that's just horrible. Let me take this out. Uh, so here is a big basket of fabric scraps that I have. So my goal is to put it to good use. And one great way to do that is in a junk journal. And one of the wonderful things we can do with a junk journal cover is make all sorts of fun, different little things out of it. So um, I'm going to pull out some pieces that I think might go well together. Maybe greens and beiges. I'm not sure yet. I'm just kind of finding my way here. Here's some coffee dyed. Um, what was that? I think it was a shirt. And um, little pieces, these kinds of fun things. So there's, I mean, no end to the joy you can have with this. Look, here's an edge of a shirt. Might be able to incorporate that somehow. Um, there will be a little sewing with the machine, but I think it's, you can also glue this all down with something like Fabrifix. If you've never seen it, here's the bottle. Fabrifix by Beacon, clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. But there certainly are a lot of, um, so I'm looking for similar, I'm going to use this swatch as a base color to go off of. So if I can find things that are somewhat colored to this, that's kind of similar. Pinky peach going on here. Uh, here's something that has those tones in it. So maybe I'll use some of that. I already have some of that green. What about that? Okay, here's some weird pieces. It's got some greens, it's a little shiny. We'll see, we'll decide as we go. More greens and yellows. I can pull yellows and beiges. Yeah, more beiges. And it's okay if it's a little lumpy bumpy, that's all right, and some whites will always go in there. Oh, what, what are you? Well, you're, you could be a good color. Um, yeah, so just having some fun here. I don't know how small I'm going to keep these pieces because what you can do is you can put bigger swaths down first and then come in with smaller pieces at the end for little accents. So we may play with some 
things like that. You have no idea what I'm pulling out here. Just a random mishmash. Here's some beiges. Beiges. Whoops. Sorry about that. Did I knock you out of the way? Yep, totally. All right. So we'll just cruise along and make this little guy. Oh, that's pretty. He's got some pretty. All right. So let's get some. You can get fabric scissors, pinking scissors. I think pinking shears might be a good idea for this style. And I think what I'm going to do initially. Okay. So I have all sides sealed here. Now. Um, what you could do if you're thinking, okay, I want to address, this would be the inside of the journal. This would be the inside cover. Now, if you wanted to do a wrap around, now would be a really good time to do that. And maybe to give it a little bit extra structure, I'm going to put in, what have I got? Got some weird file folder here. I don't know exactly what this is, kind of weird file folder. It's it's like a trifold file. But anyway, it's manila folder. It's just a little bit more structure. And I think that might be something good to put on the inside here. Number one, to unify the color and also give it a little more structure. So, can you see? Let me move back up a little bit. Okay, maybe that's better. All right, so let's just dive in and do this. Let's, let's actually be very bold. We're going to glue it down. How about that? And I'm going to use, um, whoop, not with this. No, that would be silly. Get the one you put in the Sugar Bells icing piping bottle. Why? Because it's easier to um, distribute the glue. And I know the glue is going to go everywhere here. A little under glue under there. So, and put it here. Now this is going hard surface, hardish surface to hardish surface where there's not going to be any bleed through. So I'm just making mind that the edges are nicely glued. But I don't have to do a lot of excessive finger smooshing because um, it's not going to bleed through. Okay, I have a little glue on that. That will hold that down. I'll just get that down. Now I can put this comfortably and safely here. And I've already covered the inside. Okay. There we go. So the old smusharama. And then I'm going to take my. I like, really like my other ruler. Where's my other ruler? Here it is. Okay. This is my Westcott cor cork-backed ruler. It has a little more traction to it. The uh, This one is magnetized, which is handy for other purposes. But right now, I think I like my old Westcott. Okay. Let me see. Am I in frame? Because I'm sitting down. I'm almost in frame. Okay. All right. So we're just going to cut this along here. All right. I'm playing with some shorts videos, so don't be surprised if you see some shorts videos pop out every once in a while. I haven't quite figured out all of that yet, but I'm working on it. I have a, I did try a few shorts way back when, and I got a little overwhelmed, so I decided to back away slowly and then reapproach when it seemed to make sense. And it seems to make sense now, so you might see some here and there. Um, and those will be in addition to, not in lieu of. Okay. So that is the inside now. And I kind of like the fact that that's there because that to me harkens back to the days of, you know, office supplies and office work and stuff like that. Okay. So what's that? Oh, it's some kind of inner. Oh, there was an extra inner flap. So that means, that means this, I could make a pocket out of this, but I think I'm just going to keep it easy and glue it all together. If I want an extra pocket there, I'll make one. Gosh, darn it. Okay. Now, now here's a, an opportune. You're okay, Bobber Lou. I know. Everything's all right. It's okay. It is okay. And put this here and that there. And I'm going to use the old bone folder, a craft journal maker's favorite tool. At least it is mine, one of mine. Uh, there we go. Now I have this, and that could totally be the inside. But I think I would like to it up a little bit and since I'm doing the outside in a cloth I might want to do the inside in a cloth as well and this like I said might be the opportune time to do that and I do have a nice piece of um, white bedding here which I just need to oh, I, figure, I can't tear it okay let me get a, a bigger piece uh, it's just a bed sheet and it's been laundered and it's a white cotton bed sheet. I think it's going to go 
well here. Let me just get a chunk of Rooney. Okay, I know I'm gone, but I, I'm, I'm literally right here. Okay, nothing is tearing for me today, so I'll try the other end. Trying the other end. This is what I'm working with. Okay, it's just bed sheet. Nothing, nothing exciting other than a white bed sheet. Okay. And you can get those at the thrift stores for pretty much, whoops, I, sorry, um, not too much money. So check out your thrift stores or maybe you have one around the house, some of that, steal it off the kid's bed. They'll never know. Well, they might know, but um, you can deny it. Plausible deniability. I have absolutely, no, I'm not saying lie to your children. I would never, never. I'm just kidding with you. Um, okay, got rid of that bulk of it. And then we have this now. This is the stretchy sheet, so I want to get rid of that part. I'm just going to... It's If you can get this stuff to tear, it can be your best friend. If you're against the grain or whatever it is, it's your worst nightmare. Okay, that's just the way it goes. But what you want is a piece that's just a smidgeroo bigger than what you're actually using. Okay, because we're going to do a wraparound technique on this baby to cover up the raw edges. So let's give a good healthy... This is pretty thin material, so I'm going to do at least an inch on all sides. And... Can you see that? Okay, so there's that there, that there. Oh, let me, let me, that should be good. Ugh. Okay, now height should be about there. Okay. And you can also, I think I did start to coffee dye this a little bit. Let me just see if there's any coffee dye in here that I can. Yeah, apparently there is, but it doesn't squirt anymore. I don't know why. Maybe it wasn't open. And the squirter doesn't work anymore. You know how that goes sometimes. Sometimes you just got to get in there and coffee dye it any way you can see fit. Apparently this is my technique of the day, using what's in the tube and so it's not going to soak it's going to spot and that i think is kind of a cool um vintagey look now you can add to this you can add more drops if you see you want some areas you might like it a little bit more coffee dropped you can use cup marks you can do all sorts of fun things it's so weird how it's repelling off this looks like little beads or something it's very cool actually okay on here what the heck and the nice thing about using the fabrifix glue with this is the fabrifix glue will glue this fabric to this paper even though the fabric's wet which is kind of amazing go fabrifix glue i know right okay so i'm just gonna mush that around a bit spread the color a bit okay now we have this which is kind of very cool all right that's very nice now i know i know i see that i do okay if we want to deal with that we have our ways we could um cover it up. I have a label sticker here, or we could um, put a an embellishment over that, but just so, because we don't know what we're going to do. Let me see if that handles that. That's pretty good. That's why I can't really see it there. So um, and I can always put this one on top if need be. Give it a little more opacity. Or you could put white pieces of paper to cover the manila if you want, but I think that's pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and glue. This is the glue the bejeebers technique. Okay, we're going to put this down. Now this fabric is very thin, so we'll have to do some smooshing. I usually do finger smooshing. I feel it's a very effective technique. I like it. It's a um, good, you know, it's the best tool ever. And I get the spine good. So we are creating literally something out of just stuff around the house maybe everybody's got a bed sheet uh, maybe you've got manila folder if you don't have manila folder go cut up a cereal box and use that on the inside cut up um some thin pieces of you know that colored cardboard you know that um construction paper stuff that stuff and i'm just going to run over these glue globs a little bit so i don't have like lines i want to smooth it down a smidgeroon i Okay, let's hopefully I did that fast enough. And now I want to lay this down before all the glue dries. Yeah. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that looks really cool. Gosh, I, I could I could use that as the cover. I like that a lot. Um, so as you can see, the coffee dye pulled, and I just use instant coffee crystals and water to my depth of color. So I just keep adding it until I get the depth of color. And you kind of learn how much is too much. I would start with maybe um, this much water, like what would fit in a big mug. And then maybe add two tablespoons of coffee uh, instant crystals and see if you like that color. That would probably give you a decent depth to start with, but you can always add or take away as needed. Okay, so now inside cover, flipping, we have outside cover. Now you can do this multiple different ways. I'm going to take the easy road, which is I'm just going to do this on every corner. So we're going to put a dab of glue. This is not going to be seen in the back because we're going to cover this back with a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm not too worried about that. So we're going to put this little dog ear in. You can cut these shorter if you want less um, material to deal with. It all depends how thick your material is that you're working with. I'm just going to put all these little, I call them dog ears, in the, yep. They're sunny ears, okay? Okay, sunny's down for the count. That's good. Okay, so, uh huh. And around the world we go with the glue. That is so good. Okay, so again, we don't really need to do much smooshing, finger smooshing, because this is not going to be seen. It's going to be underneath, and we pull the corners tight. You should get a nice corner. It's pretty um, flushy, flat stuff we're working with here. And uh, there, okay. There is another technique of doing these corners, but this is one I tend to use most often because I never get my, my corner poking through inadvertently. And, and when I do it the other way, by cutting off the little tails, my little corner edge always pokes through. It's just, I don't know, it's a thing with me. Okay, so. Here is our inside looking all pretty and dandy. And if I can get these fuzz balls and glue balls off my fingers, we are going to carry on in happy land. All right, so that's the front. Here's the back. I'm going to glue this down just to give a little, so I'm not dealing with this flappage. You know, who wants flappage? I'm trying to contain, or containing. I'm dealing with my flappage. Flappage has to be dealt with, whether it's, whether it's on your body or it's, it's in your junk journal. It's got to be dealt with one way or another. We either go bravely forward and ignore it, <laughs> which I can say I've definitely done that, um, or we deal with it. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm just going to maybe cut some pieces that might make sense. There's a lot of um, edging to this. was a, sh a dress, I believe, at one point. I'm really after this material in the middle. And I can use this other edging stuff for something some later. That would be really cute as a, um, I don't know, something like a journal bag or something like that. Maybe this could be the handle. It's kind of rounded. It's an, it must be the arm or something. So we'll just put that over there for now. It has to do over there. Yeah. And I think, like I said, you can put pretty big. What I would get rid of are all these seams. So if you have seams, that can be a little extra bumpy. So you may want to get rid of those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's use this as our first piece of lay down. And it doesn't have to be perfectly square or straight or anything. We're just laying it down. Maybe I'm going to put the glue on the back of this so it just we're, we're working within the confines of what we have. Um, okay, so this is actually a grand experiment. I probably made something similar, maybe not exact to this before. Uh, but this is what I felt like doing today. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. And it's not like you make one thing one way and you're done. You always add a little something or different or new. So if you do see a, a refurbished idea of mine, that I do a video again on something is because maybe I have extra ideas or something. And they always, they always come out a little different. Matter what you do. Okay. All right, there we go. Try not to get the glue on the front pan. And if you did, and it's not coming off, you can always cover it up. You know what I'm saying? So let's not get all worried. No, 
Okay, so maybe some beige needs to come in here. This kind of interesting stuff. I don't know exactly what we'd call this. It's like a, a lacy netting sort of thing. Oops, sorry. You know, there's a lot of reckless banding going on here today, apparently. Okay. Hmm. Like stuff inside there. I have no idea what that is. Um, all right, let's, it's kind of almost like a netting. I don't know if that's going to be the right piece. Let's actually put our, our favorite accent piece here. This is going to be the front cover. We'll put this down here. That would be kind of cool. All right, let's do that. All right, here's a bigger piece. This is going to be our um, inspiration piece. And that's maybe a good way to, if you're not quite sure what color pattern to work with, get an inspiration piece and pull from that and look to see what you have that either complements or contrasts. And go with one of those. Like go for the complementing colors or go for the contrasting colors and just see what you get. Maybe I'll just stick this right in the middle on an angle. Yeah, how about that? That's wild. Um, not too much bleed through. This is a thicker fabric, and hopefully that will be a okay. And I'm rolling again the glue balls. Oh, you tilted on me. Come back. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to see what else we have here that goes in this color palette. And I do have some greens of some sort here. What is this okay? This ribbing part, this like edging, I don't want, but the the other part I think would be good. So let me get rid of that seam. I'm just going to cut these pieces. They're here. Okay. I could have covered the whole thing in this uh, bedding and then started from that too. Just so, And that could have been part of the background. So it would have filled in the holes. But I don't know. I felt being a little wild and dangerous and uh, just maybe, I don't know, you know, at that side's ribbing. That's kind of cool. Um, or I could come down this way. That's kind of cool. I don't know. Here? Okay. Right here. So there's so many options, you know. Okay, well, let's just put some down. All right. Just tell yourself there's no wrong way to do this. No wrong way to do it. Just, and just get it down there because you can always add more. And if you have to, you probably can take away. Okay. All right. Now the idea was to sew it all, but now I'm thinking I've covered the inside, which looks really pretty, but I still might sew it all and it might look extra pretty or hobbly gobbly, and we won't know until I sew it. So this is probably going to have several parts to making this journal cover. Um, just because it's going to be a little bit more of an intricate process. But like I said, if you've got the pieces at home and you're just sitting there with a bunch of old clothes or pieces of fabric or you're a quilter or Sally next door has way too much fabric than she knows what to do with, you just march on over there and get that and uh, bring it home and we'll make some junk journals. All right, so here's another little complimentary color. Oh, that could go very nicely there. Okay, let's do that. All right, do, do, do. it's a little thinner. Might want to do a little finger smooshing here and see where we get. All right. Uh -huh. Let me make it a little a little cockeyed, not that it matches exactly. We don't, we don't want matchy matchy. But we want a little layered. Uh -huh. Oh, there's a big glue glob there. Fine. So I know I feel your presence, glue glob. You're making your presence known. I think I need a wet nap at this point in the game. So Let's just do a little bit more here. And, oh, I, I do have this, which is, it's not that, but it looks very similar. So maybe we'll use some of this. Um, maybe I can actually do, I, oh, look at how that blends. You know, isn't it funny when you use coffee dye and cotton, how, how uh, similar it looks. This was done eons ago, I can tell you that. Should I use the, the that's kind of cool, actually, with the seam on that. So sometimes... Tossing the seam isn't always the answer. I don't know. Mm. It's confusing. But I could. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. That there and layer it on. Lay it this way. Maybe that way, huh? 
Yeah, maybe there, and then I'll kind of give it a cut tear. Here, I'm going to have to cut that. So sometimes you sort of have to feel your way with what you're doing. You have to ask yourself, like, what am I doing? And, and you might not have an answer. You might just be, I have no idea. I'm just doing what she's doing on the video, and she doesn't know what she's doing and where it's going to go. But until we're all done, we just don't know. Okay, so we don't know how intricate, how... I do really like this accent piece. I could have put that on last. I want to expose as much of it as I can. I can even squash the fabric. The fabric doesn't even have to stay as is. It can be all over the place. So let's let's try a bit of that. Oh, yep. Sunny agrees. He's all for the smooshing. And yeah, I should probably smoosh this. This is, this is good. The quickie smoosh. The smoosh and get her done smoosh. Okay, so now we have this and get it all glued together because that happens. And, um, oh yeah, I hear you, Sonny. Oh, you make an excellent point. And don't worry if you don't get every little edge because you can always come along with little pieces later and fill in the holes. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, so we are just building up this baby. So let me bring back to you my little guy. I know we haven't made much progress, but in a way we did. We got the inside cover. Huh. And um, the top we're working on, it's, it's not nearly done. The sun, what do you want to tell the, everybody, the nice people, that there is the 50% off sale going on? And do you have a, do you have a, um, you must have something to say. I just feel you do. I feel it in my bones. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine. I would like to say very much, I love you all. No matter what you think of little white poofy dogs, I know I'm not for everybody. There are big dog people. There are cat people. We won't even go there. We um, There are bird people. And then there's the other category. And you know who you are. I don't have to point all of you out, Sally. Um. But I would like to say, just take one more look at this cute little face and just tell me there isn't something, just something that you see that reaches into your soul deeply and licks your nose. <laughs> well, I don't know if they want their noses licked. Okay. I don't understand why they wouldn't, but that's okay. You humans are a little odd, but I'll give you that. I still love you all. Happy crafting. Sunshine out. Did I mention I'm a cub pup reporter? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I guess he's he's a little emotional today. So we're just going to leave it at that. And uh, we're going to go from there. So we're going to watch this develop over time. Maybe you just add some ideas and thoughts. And, and uh, you know, as I go through the process, um, I'll try and title them individually and put all the links to this particular project in the description box with it, if you don't have the, you know, whatever. Um, I'll do my best so that you have access to it. I'll try and figure out something. But we carry on from here. If you don't know, I have a uh, newsletter, a free did uh, free monthly emailed newsletter. If you sign up for that, you get a um, free digital image, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it, a um, um, page list of ideas, and um, junk journal tips, updates from me, lots of fun. And uh, when you first sign up for that, you should get one within 24 hours. And then after that, monthly on the first. So um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. That's my new schedule, 7 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, I have an Etsy shop. So if you're looking for uh, journals and bundles and kits and fundles when I have them available, they are in my Etsy shop. And um, fundles are collections of old and interesting paper if you like um vintage and antique book pages um antique ledger checks receipts postcards black and white photos tea cards uh this is obviously when i have it available the uh paper music paper from the old player pianos some old handwriting uh, lots of cool things in there over 100 plus pieces and they are mail free priority mail shipping i also have a print and mail service for my digikits digikits are printable downloadable images um, that are eternally saved in your Etsy account. So if you lose them on your computer, you can always go back to your Etsy account as long as you remember the email you used. And um, 
uh, just download them again. And that's in perpetuity. They're always yours to use. Yes, you can use them to um, uh, in your junk journals or in your artwork to sell them. Uh, so that is true. You can't, the only thing you can't do is actually sell the digikits themselves. Um, so what else? Um, um, I have an Amazon shop. If you like any of the tools that you see me use here, favorite tools and supplies, I forgot to paint all of these. I pulled this out and I didn't paint. Um, you can, um, find links. Uh, you, if you have a hard time finding the Amazon shop, just Google Amazon, the paper outpost, and it should bring up a link and then look in the uh, favorite tools and supplies section. And you're going to find links to all these uh, different things that you see me use here. And also what else? Um, I have a merchandise shop, if you like the phrase, create with reckless abandon, or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, zip hoodie, mug, tote, or water bottle. And also, what else? You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having fun doing weekly and monthly challenges, as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And also, um, most of all, aside from all the selling, fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And I'll see you next time.